Hello my loves and welcome to the vlog. It has been a while since I've posted my last studio vlog, more precisely since June this year. It's nice to be back. There was no particular reason why I wasn't posting more. It was probably because I was investing more time than I usually do into designing new crochet patterns and totally forgot to document the process, which happens to me all the time. When I start working, crocheting and playing with fibers, I totally forget the world around me and I deeply emerge in the process of making something new. August was a month of fun projects. I tackled my very first needle punch work, it was so much fun. It's actually a very calming thing to do and now I want to do this more often. I purchased the hoops and uh, punching needles on Amazon and used yarn cakes that were already in my yarn stash. The first couple of stitches were, let's say, interesting. I was struggling with keeping the yarn in the fabric. For some reason the yarn did not want to stay in, so I took the pliers and closed the opening part on the needle a bit. Some would say I've destroyed the needle but I could still use it afterwards and this actually solved my problem and I successfully finished the project, which I was very happy about. The next thing I did was my crochet pattern of the month, which was pattern for a crochet baby romper. It was originally made with beige and blue cotton yarn, but then I asked you guys what color I should use and the majority of you said you actually prefer light green and beige. So I used those two colors for the finished project and the pattern and I think the romper came out super cute. I was and still am very happy about it. I am already planning to make a sweater that would look similar to that romper, so finger crossed, I hope it will be ready soon. Vlogging is something I want to do and explore more. I want to document precious moments of my work and my life to save little memories for me, for my very forgetful mind and for you to get a sneak peek into what is going on behind the scenes, how the patterns are made and what I'm doing when I'm not working on new designs. There is so much more that goes into Kroby patterns than just writing crochet instructions and tutorials and at the same time vlogs are nostalgic and can serve us as little reminders of how much we've changed, grow and evolve. It's easy to get into the game of comparison with other people, in my case also shops and other small businesses and see yourself as actually not good enough. If you keep all those memories you can go back and see how much your life has changed and how much you evolved.
I hope you are all happy and healthy, hopefully be able to spend more of your free time with a ball of yarn, crochet hook or knitting needles in your hands. And if you're new here, my name is Drotea, I am a crocheter behind Krabby Patterns. I design crochet patterns and tutorials, mostly for baby clothes, and I share my work online here on YouTube and on my blog. If that is your very first time here on my channel, I am very grateful for each and every single one of you to be here and to spend some of your precious time with me. Thank you so much, it really means a lot. I can't believe it's already September, fall is already lightly knocking on our doors. It has been raining a lot here lately and the temperature are now much lower than they were in the past month or so. All of that is calling for warmer clothes and layers, which means cardigans, sweaters, hats. It's time for fall garments, which is always a very exciting thing. My favorite fiber to work with was always cotton. That was probably because it's teaching friendly. I have been sharing my tutorials online for numbers of years now and it could be that liking cotton has over those years become a professional deformation and not really a personal preference anymore. Cotton is one of those fibers that shows your stitches very clearly, but at the same time you can also see your errors very clearly. There is no place for mistakes when working with cotton, but also when you make one you can clearly see you've messed it up and you can go back and correct the error right away and not 20 rows later or more as it often happens with so many other more delicate fibers. For me it's important to present and show the process of making the item as good as I can and with that cotton in my opinion and experience is simply the best choice. However it's good to be curious and interested in trying out new things. Therefore I am slowly moving forward and discovering all sorts of fibers and enjoy playing with them, trying them out and testing new stitches and techniques. After all, changing just fiber and nothing else can make a tremendous difference in finished projects. Just imagine crocheting or knitting a skirt on a romper with a mohair yarn instead of cotton. It would be like a skirt made of clouds. It would give the romper or dress, whatever you want to call it, a totally different vibe. And for that, you don't have to change a stitch. You just have to change a fiber you're working with and magic happens. That is why I usually say it's okay to experiment with yarn and use any type of fiber you like with my patterns because it unlocks a new layer of creativity in projects. But as always, please check the gauge before you start. It can make or break your project and that is not a joke. I'm not very good at planning, I never was, 
I don't plan making patterns in advance, I usually write a bunch of them when inspiration strikes and then crochet finished items, use some of them for my tutorials and store the rest into my project box for a dry season, when I hit the creative block or I work on a deadline. I spent most of my time behind the computer doing admin work, editing tutorials and calculating stitches. It is fun and super important, but I would be crocheting or weaving over admin work in a second or buying new yarn, of course. We all love that. I've collected quite a lot of yarn this year, so I think this is going to be my last yarn order and yarn haul for now. I will restrain myself from buying new yarn and rather save some money for something I am dreaming about for a while now. <laughs> you can guess what that could be in the comments below, I will let you know if your guess is correct. However, I can't wait to share it all with you when it happens, it's super exciting. Latest yarn haul, so this one you see here, I ordered a bunch of yarn I haven't tried before. I think I would say the yarn represents my fall winter color palette perfectly. I can't wait to see what each skin will become and what its new life will be. That's always so exciting. My shawl stitch obsession is slowly coming back and I have been dreaming about making a shawl or a cardigan with some of this yarn in a combination of shawl stitch and I think those two would look beautifully together. The yarn I purchased this time is mostly a blend of wool and some additional fibers, usually polyester. Synthetic fibers help yarn to be more durable while washing and sometimes even get them additional softness. Like I said, I'm very used to buying and working with cotton. It doesn't need any special care, however, with wool it's different. I will have to be very careful how I use it, wash it and even store it to prevent any accidents, of course. Hopefully a little bit of lavender will do the trick for storing and the rest I will have to figure it out as I go. I have had this idea of storing yarn samples in a neat way, preferably all in one place, maybe a notebook for a while now. I've tried a couple of different versions of it, nothing really worked so far. The paper was most of the time too thin and the book at the end came out too big and way too cluttered. This time around I think I found something that might work just fine. 
I ordered a scrapbook with paper that is meant to be used for attaching things, gluing them to the book and making holes into the paper. It has only 40 pages, but I think that is more than enough for a year or at least one season of journaling and adding samples. Once I fill this one out, I can always go and purchase more. I cannot wait to have a collection of these so I can go back and remember all the projects I've made over the years. I started documenting my process with the yarn that arrived in the month of August. I punched some holes into the pages and took samples of different colors and yarns. I've made small samples of gauge with recommended hook and needle and carefully attach those to the pages too. It's already nice to have a simple gauge already made with the yarn and hook you're planning to use so you can jump right into the project making process. This also means you will have the privilege to play with yarn way before hat. So do some research and save the time when inspiration hits and you want to start crocheting or knitting right away and not losing any time. The thing is, I find hook recommendations available on the yarn labels a bit off sometimes. They are not wrong or anything, it's just that I personally prefer firmer fabric, especially for baby shoes, hats and rompers. Airy fabric uh, is great for summer items or more fluffy yarn and for items like cardigans and sweaters, but baby shoes need structure and with that firmer fabric of course. That is why I usually use a smaller crochet hook than what you see on the yarn label. I truly love each and every single skein I purchased for my fall projects. All of them are so beautiful and so soft. I wish you could feel it. Plus the colors are exactly what I wanted. All of them so pretty. I could not be happier with my purchase.
I will spend most of my days here in my small office and continue working on new designs. I am very grateful to have a privilege to try out all this beautiful yarn and to be able to share new patterns with all of you. Thank you for keeping me company today, I hope you liked the vlog and my little update on what happened in Crobby Pattern Studio in August. Have a beautiful day, stay safe and well and happy crocheting everyone! I will see you all very soon, bye!